Welcome back to the channel, everybody. As you can see, we're at one of my workbenches today. And today is kind of a, a test and a show and tell. So we're going to be testing this particular product right here. And it says digital meter on it, but there's a little bit of a backstory. Why do I have this? Why do I want to use it? It's because of a, uh, a need that I have in the classroom and also a post that a friend of mine who runs a YouTube channel called Currently Rock Hounding recently posted. And he uh, has a channel that, that deals with rocks and minerals and uh, collecting and also working stone. And so some of the tools that are used in that industry, lapidary work, are of great interest to him. And he's kind of been doing this deep dive back into some older issues of Rock and Gem magazine. And so he found this article in 1979, September, and he read this thing and went, is, is that legit? Is that a real thing? And he kind of posted it and a bunch of us responded. I'm sure the others that responded are also Sparkies. They um, responded to this statement. And here it's for, for rock saws, rock cutting saws. Larger saws may have an adjustable rate of feed and even a meter to let you know when the blade is working too hard. Well, that's not a thing these days. In fact, some of the older rock saws that are available, if you can find them, people snag them up because uh, the market is very, very limited. If you're trying to buy one new, they're incredibly expensive. And some of the older product was just better made. So that's the question. Now, there are products where you could, you could easily check that. Uh, here's a, a kilowatt and you're able to, to see what the circuit is doing, see how much it's drawing, etc. And that's really the telltale sign. So a bunch of us responded that, yeah, we've seen that on equipment. And in fact, I recall seeing it on uh, equipment in a trust plant north of Spokane, older equipment. And the, uh, the, uh, the motors that um, were there to, to cut different kinds of stock, they had panel mount meters on the electrical equipment, kind of, kind of like this. I don't have one for amps. This here is a, a voltage one. But it was a panel mount meter that if things were working too hard, you'd, you'd be able to see it, right? If your blade was getting dull, you would had to reduce the feed or sharpen the blade, etc., so that you wouldn't trip the overloads. Like I said, there are ways of checking current. Um, I have my, my trusty Fluke meters set up as well, and they'll measure between 0 and 10 amps directly. But both of these have a bit of a challenge. So I teach in a classroom. And if you're sitting right in the front, you'll be able to see the meter okay if I'm demonstrating something. But these are LCDs. And even backlit, nobody in the back row is actually going to be able to see these. So when Jared posted that, I thought, you know what, I've, I've seen a bunch of these kicking around on, uh, on Amazon. I wonder if they're any good because these digital meters are LED. They're bright enough. So if I have these in a panel mount and I run an experiment, everybody's going to be able to see that. So that's the, the question. Are these good enough? Because they're really, really cheap, really inexpensive. Are these good enough? So what's in the box? Um, the voltage range is between uh, 0 and 300, and the amps range is between 0 and 99.9. .9. And I'm hoping it's accurate enough. If it's accurate within a tenth of an amp, that's good enough for the, the experiments that I do when I'm teaching. So the voltage leads are connected here, and then the hot lead connects through and goes through the donut right here. And what happens is the magnetic field around the hot lead gets picked up by the current transformer, and that gets translated into an opacity. So we'll test it. I'll test it on a motor. I'll put the motor under load. I'll put a brake on the, on the motor to uh, see. And I'll also have my other meter, my fluke meter down there, in line with it to see if this is accurate enough. And if it is, I plan to throw it into a, an experimenter's box, package it up, put some cord ends on it, male and female plug, and I'll wrap it up and I'll send it to Jared to see if he wants to try using it on his rock saw. All right, let me quickly show you my test setup. Here's the motor that I'm going to be testing. I have it set up so that uh, my standard fluke meter is able to measure that. I've got it set up as a two capacitor motor. So there's a run capacitor and a start capacitor. The run capacitor will keep the current draw low enough by doing some power factor correction. And it's attached with its drive shaft to 
a way of measuring torque. I'm not really interested in the ability to measure torque at this point. What I'm really after is that I can apply a brake by tightening this knob and put a heavy load on the motor itself. And I should be able to see that reflected in the displays. And it's um, quite, uh, in the classroom it works really well. That display is bright enough. You can see it all the way to the back of the classroom. It's a little washed out with the light that I've got cast on it right now for filming, but that is excellent. So um, I've got a little bit of background. I've got uh, 30 milliamps showing, so a little bit of background that, uh, you know, because of all the magnetic fields that are kicking around here, and I've got 40 milliamps showing on this meter. So um, if, if that's as far out as this cheap meter is from the actual, I'm, I'm going to be you know, just tickled, so that's going to work out well. All right, I'm going to set this up on the little tripod, and uh, then we'll start up the motor and see how accurate this thing actually is. Okay, here we go. And by the way, you'll probably see this flickering back and forth a little bit. That is just a function of the frame rate of the camera versus the frequency that we've got. Um, in real life, to your eye, it is uh, it doesn't uh, doesn't get dim and bright and dim and bright. So in case you can see that on the camera, that's not the way that it actually looks in, uh, in real life. So here we go. I'll start up the motor. And without a load, I've got 3.2 amps here. I've got 3.2 amps there. If I'm within a tenth of an amp, I'm happy. And that is even much closer than that. So I'm within, looks like about uh, 20 milliamps of each other between the two meters. So that's great. All right, let's apply a load. Okay, one thing that I just realized is I didn't really show you how this is set up and uh, because that's a little bit off of frame. So let me adjust the camera a little bit. And here we go. So I've got my power coming in through the amp meter, the fluke meter right here. I also have that same lead coming through the current transformer and then supplying power. And then I've got the, the neutral lead here on the black wire coming over to the motor to supply voltage, to give me my voltage readout, and that voltage is accurate. Um, that's what I've got here on my big meter up there. It shows 122.1, so that's plenty accurate. Uh, the two white wires that I have that stab off of the, the uh, binding posts right here, those are supplying the voltage reading. So I'm, I'm really pleased with this. This is working out. I'll throw this into a box. I'll send it off to Jared, and I'm going to order myself a few more so that... I can use them in the classroom. That is a, a really good, inexpensive solution for the kinds of uh, displays that I have where I need to just quickly demonstrate current and voltage on, on three different phases. All right, well, we'll see you back at the other workbench.
All right, one quick test before I stuff it into a, a mailer and uh, thinking it'll go in one of these, maybe one size larger. But uh, here's our, our finished unit. We can plug it in. And we've got 122 volts. Okay, that's good. And I need a load. I've got a little space heater here. We'll try that. That should be sufficient. Plug that in, give it a go. Perfect. All right, and just in case you're wondering, yes, the voltage did drop. I'm on a longer extension cord here at this particular work table. So with uh, drawing 13 amps, it's going to have a little bit of voltage drop. So that's perfectly expected. So nothing, uh, nothing strange going on there. Let's uh, turn this off. The heating element is kicking down. It's cooling it off. The fan's still running. So I'd say that's a success. So I'll send this off to you, Jared, and hopefully you can do something with it. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.